All right, I asked for questions from all of you and you delivered and with some of the recent events in history with the passing of Terry Funk and the passing of Wyndham Rotunda, I delayed this a couple of days because I wanted to talk about those guys in separate videos, but I'm here now to do this Q&A video. So thank you to all of you that submitted your questions. If you want your questions answered in a future Q&A, follow the show on Twitter and then next time I ask for them, you let them fly. Of course, I can't get to all of them. I try to get to some of the best ones. So here we go. Splash Bro Kieran asked, let's say Hogan never turned heel at Bash of the Beach. How do you think it would affect his career, WCW, the Monday Night Wars, WWF, and the wrestling industry in general? That is a fantastic and amazing alternate wrestling history kind of question. And the reality is, if Hogan doesn't turn there... Like, he would have probably stuck around a few more years in WCW and the company would have went down with him. WWF wouldn't have been as pressed and forced to do the things that they did. The Monday Night Wars wouldn't have been what they were. Yeah, that, you could point to like, you could make a lot of bad decisions, but there are certain actions, certain moments in time that matter more than others. Hogan turning heel at Bash of the Beach 96 that's one of the most pivotal moments of wrestling history. And that's not hyperbole to say. Daniel Simmons, Daniel Sims, excuse me, underscore 23. If Booker T won at WrestleMania 19, would his match against Triple H be viewed better, more positively than what it is right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I don't even think it's a question. And sometimes it just comes down to, like, you need to have a mediocre match. But if the right person wins, it's not so bad. It's palpable. If the wrong guy wins, it just pisses you off even more and makes a mid-match worse. V2 of Doom asks, what was Terry Funk's lasting influence on the wrestling business? I think it's the American hardcore wrestling, right? You know, some people would call it the garbage mud show wrestling, but it has Terry Funk's fingerprints all over it. And he's the king of hardcore wrestling. Like, that's the lasting influence. And you could say there's some negative influence, too, because there certainly is in terms of, you know, people, younger kids would watch and see, like, his old stuff in ECW, et cetera, watch the Japanese death matches and so forth, and think that's all that Terry Funk was about, and they thought they could go out there and have to do some of the same stuff and over to get over. They forget about the great foundation of Terry Funk as the talent, as the performer, and they, they miss that important context, so... He certainly had a ton of impact and influence on the wrestling business. And his lasting influence is on the, the propensity for the hardcore matches. And it's kind of one of those complicated legacies to talk about because that's not necessarily the most positive thing. MC17 Clark, I know you hate the invasion angle. I do too. Everybody should. But in a cynical kind of way, do you think deep down the invasion angle was meant to be shit? That's an interesting spin. And as petty as Vince McMahon is, you certainly shouldn't eliminate that as a possibility. I think it was more of a, well, we got all these guys. We got to do something. Let's try to manufacture some competition that we don't really have anymore. Was the WWF at the time saying, oh, we're at the top of the mountain. This kind of fucking sucks. So what do we do now? We got to figure out something. And I just don't think they had the passion or commitment to doing it. It's more about that than less of a, Hey, we intentionally want this to be shit. That's, you can't eliminate that as a possibility, though. Nick Willis PNW asks, Which match would you rather see? Cena and Orton at WrestleMania 40 or CM Punk versus the Young Lion Sting at this year's Bound for Glory? Shit! Now this, this is a hard-hitting question. Nick Willis, you fucker! How dare you make me choose? Now, what I don't know, and this is going to be my effective dodge for the moment because you did not provide clarity here. Is it Cena versus Orton at WrestleMania or is it Cena versus Orton for a world title at WrestleMania? It's different. You got to let me know. And maybe you come back and you clarify your question next time and I won't be able to back out of it. And same thing with CM Punk and Sting. Like, obviously, hashtag Punk fears Sting. Everybody fucking knows that. MJF fears Sting. Everybody fears this young lion. 
but you're not specifying whether or not this match should be for the AEW World Championship. Or maybe it's champion versus champion, right? Like, details, Nick, details, these damn things matter. So I'm not going to answer until you provide more of the details. Because they're important. What a tough fucking decision that would be. DeMarcus Flowers, what are your thoughts on John Moxley? I always thought he was a decent Dean Ambrose, but he's been completely unbearable with the excessive blading, shitty forearms, and standing and chopping his opponent back and forth in every match. Fucking amen. This is an example of a guy that's allowed too much creativity and too much freedom, and he isn't being reined in at the top. And this is the abomination abortion of result that you see. Yeah, he fucking sucks now. I hate Moxley. Nice. Just garbage. Just bad. Rick Styles, 1985. Is CM Punk Wrestling's version of Terrell Owens with his wrestling being overshadowed by locker room issues? Um. Hmm. Not the craziest analogy or comparison. I think it would make be more fitting if Punk forced his way out of several different high-profile wrestling companies. Um, that might be a little more fitting. Um, or if CM Punk was bitching about not making it into the Hall of Fame, and then when he does, he decides he doesn't want to go. Like, that's Terrell Owens. Terrell Owens, excuse me. Uh, so, is Punk Wrestling's version of Terrell Owens? To some degree, perhaps. I don't think it's a perfect one-for-one -one comparison, but it's not crazy. A sinner, five, five, or five, one, one, ninety. When I look back at the NWO angle, I feel that Sting added a great deal to it by being the lone Dark Avenger, because he did. You're absolutely right. And his pursuit of Hogan in 97 was fantastic. I strongly believe that the Bud Line would have benefited from having a star and character like that to play off. Who do you think could have potentially filled that role? You know what? It is an excellent question. It's an excellent point, and I absolutely freaking agree with you. I don't know that you have somebody with the force of power of character and personality and presence of a sting, but, you know, if you were saying, hey, we want to build a guy for the future, this would be where you would sit there and say that Braun Breaker type of guy would have been the major foible. But that, that's the key thing, right? Is like, who would have been that sting presence? And, and I just don't know that you had one. And somebody's going to say, well, Cody Rhodes. No, not Cody Rhodes. It just doesn't work the same, right? It, it, it's just, it, no. <laughs> Sorry, no. No, no, no. But the thought of having somebody that would, you know, be at a place that they would be the major foible and the counter to the bloodline and they would work their way through the bloodline up to getting to and through Roman. Yeah, that is incredibly appealing. Would have been nice to see. J24, Brian Leslie. Why don't you do fantasy booking videos? Personally, I think you'd be brilliant at it. Love from Scotland. Well, thank you. Enjoy some haggis. I think that's what the Scots eat. I don't fucking know. Um, I've done fantasy booking videos before. You've probably seen some people in the comments, and they'll probably tell you here, uh, Brian, about you know my one involving Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe from a few years ago. Um, it just requires a lot of time to invest because if I'm going to do something like that, I really want to think about it. And like really legitimately invest time in it. And I just don't know that I have the, the mental bandwidth or the physical capacity to be able to do so. But never say never. They may come back again. Mid Carter J, do you think that the lack of megastars draws in modern wrestling and Hollywood reflect modern society? In some ways, yes. Because the internet is like the great democratizer in terms of everybody can get exposure, everybody can get a chance, everybody has the option. And that's part of the problem is you lose some of the selectivity, right? Like you've got even more content out there, like it further dilutes the talent pool, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's corporate greed trying to prevent, you know, paying too, somebody too much money because they don't want them to get bigger than the brand, if you will. You see that in wrestling, and I think you certainly see that in TV and movies and music. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I certainly do. And some of you might say, well, what about like a, a Beyonce or a Taylor Swift? Uh, they might be big stars relative to their time, but in terms of the all-time, you fucking psycho if you think they're on that level. 
They're about as big as what their industry would allow them to get today. Uh, the Team Forward, do you see Ricky Starks as an AEW World Champion in the future? I do, and I hope he gets there someday. Ash the King, do you see Gunther as a World Champion? Y yeah. Ugh. Gunther would be better with a mouthpiece like Paul Heyman. Like if he had a mouthpiece like Paul Heyman, I'd entertain it. Him on his own or even with the Imperium, uh, I'm not feeling that so much. Franklin Good Nine, you clearly aren't a fan of John Cena or Randy Orton, yet for years in your channel, you said that you want to see them have a final match at WrestleMania. Why would that not bore you? Let me paint the scene here. John Cena versus Randy Orton. They're at a stage in their life and careers. They're not protecting anything. They don't give a fuck. It is all gloves, gloves off in terms of politics, in terms of promos, in terms of match, in terms of every fucking thing. To have those two egomaniacs face off one more time to do something they never did, which was go one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. The fuck do you mean why would I want to see that? Of course I'd want to fucking see that. Would the match bore you? It depends on how it was worked, honestly. It's the, I'm not doing that, brother. If I'm not going over, I'm not selling, brother. Like, that's the type of shit I live for. And to that point, if you're saying, why would you want to see them? Why wouldn't I? I thought you hated those guys. And your point is, wouldn't this match bore you? And your point is, like, there are certain things that are hard to describe. I'm not exactly a big fan of Triple H, yet for a decade I've come on here and called him God. Right? Like, it, it, it's hard to describe, you know, I hate the Breakfast Club, but I will pump up the Breakfast Club. There's just something about it that you either get or you don't. But if you're telling me that you wouldn't be down for John Cena versus Randy Orton in some type of, like, retirement match at WrestleMania 40, night one main event, you're fucking crazy. Goddamn right. Fuck the future. The future is now! Let those egomaniacs, the Breakfast Club, had their one last main event moment in the sun is what the hell I say. Give Philadelphia what they want, baby! Oh, just shudder to think of the lost opportunity if they don't do this. So that's all I've got for now. Thank you, everybody, for your questions. I'll do another Q&A in a week, week and a half or so. I'll see you later.